Lolf stands at the top of the drow pantheon, claiming the largest following of drow worshippers. Bending arachnids and drows to her whims, she plots away in the demon web pits. Both a cunning and scheming deity, Lolf continues to influence many of the most important events throughout the Forgotten Realms. I am Ben Dignan, aka DM Diggy, and welcome once again to Religion in the Realms. I have two corrections for you this week. The first correction is about Ganondur. In the last episode, I stated that one of Ganondur's personal realms, the Dismal Caverns, existed in the Underdark. This is false. The Dismal Caverns, in fact, exists out on its own in the Astral Sea. Second, the majority of the handbooks for 5e provide the suggested domains for a deity. That is to say, a cleric who wants to access the knowledge domain, but be a worshipper of Illustrae, for example, is welcome to do so. The suggested domain rather reflects the domains that a given deity typically operates in. Titles Some of the titles given to Loth are The Spider Queen, The Queen of Spiders, Demon Queen of the Abyss, Queen of the Demon Web Pits, Weaver of Chaos, The Mother of Lust, Dark Mother of All Drow, and Lady of Spiders. In the past of the Forgotten Realms, and as a result in her older editions, Loth went by different regional names. In Menzel Baranzin, for example, she was known as Loth. For a long time, she had absorbed the aspect of the drow deity Zenzarina, though we see now that Zenzarina has emerged once more as her own separate deity. Portfolio and Domains Loth's portfolio includes spiders, evil, Darkness, Assassin, and Drow. Walt's suggested domains in 5th edition, as of Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, are Trickery and War. Appearance and Manifestations Walt is known for being an active deity on the Forgotten Realms. Even after the events of the Second Sundering, she still finds her way down into the Underdark to put down any powerful malcontents. She can take on a couple of different forms. One is a massive black widow spider with red eyes. Another is a beautiful drow woman. Lol's true form, however, is a combination of the two. A massive black widow spider, except with a female drow's head. This is the form she took upon her banishment to the abyss long ago. In her spider form, Lolf's Bite releases a fatal poison that can kill the hardiest of heroes within a couple rounds after they suffer through writhing ag agony. Her eight legs are spiked and are used to impale her foes. In an Edo combat, Lolf is able to take command of and summon spiders to do her bidding. Lolf makes use of the following manifestations. In the first manifestation, she will cause a set of luscious lips to appear upon a nearby spider that is then imbued with fairy fire. In her second manifestation, Lolf can cause a shadow of a large smiling spider to appear with no direct source. If someone has lost the favor of Lolf, or she wishes to torment someone who is lost in the Underdark, she can psychically cause them to hear her laughter. Finally, in a subtler way, Lolf can show her favor with the discovery of a spider encased in a gemstone or amber. Her disfavor can also be witnessed with the shattering of an object into eight separate pieces. Personal History Lolf is continuously grasping for more and more power as a deity. As of last recording, she has achieved the level of a greater deity, though for some time before she existed as an intermediate deity. Long ago, Loth was part of the Seldarine and was the consort of Corolan Lorethian. She went by Oroshni then. Corolan and her had two twins, Veron and Elastrei. Later, she looked to usurp the power of her husband. Working from the shadows, she aided Grumsh in an attempt to kill Corolan. That plan failed. She sought out the deity, Melar, to go after Corlon. That plan then failed. 
In a final bid, she gathered her own alliance to usurp the power herself. Aroshni failed in that attempt. As well, she was banished to the abyss alongside her ally allies, including her son, Veyron. Aroshni adopted a new namesake, Walth, and hewed out her own realm in the abyss. She next subjugated some of the deities from the Drow Pantheon. Set up in the demon web pits, she set out to corrupt a section of the elven population in opposition to Corlon. Targeting the warlike Illithiri elves, Lolf soon found great reverence amongst them. During the period known as the Crown Wars, the Illithiri were banished to the Underdark and cursed to feel the ill effects of the sun. They were the progenitors of the Drow. Thus started the existence of the Drow people in the Underdark. But, with the release of Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, we have a different origin story for Lolth. Now I'm going to make one of two assumptions. The first is that the origin story I'm going to describe after this aside is a new canonical origin story. The second assumption, and the one I personally subscribe to, because it does not throw out all the various works that the writers and developers in the past have come, come up with, instead offers an alternative history that scholars debate on. Long ago, Corlon valued some of the primal elves more than some. One of these primal elves was Lolth. Lolth was observant of the different planes she saw around her and the different forms of the beings who existed on them who performed great deeds. Envious of the success, Lolth convinced a number of the primal elves to adopt a body rather than the ever-changing form of Corallon. From this disagreement emerged two divisive sides siding with either Lolth or Corallon. In a debate to settle the destiny of the elves, Lolth attempted to kill Koron, while Corallon was lost in thought. Some elven gods acted to prevent the attack. Some stood their ground and did nothing. Lolth left Arvindor and settled in the Abyss. Those elven gods who were passive in Lolth's attempt on Corallon's existence became part of the Dark Seldarine. Those who stood in defense of Corallon became the Seldarine. Corlon cast out the primal elves from Arvindor to the Feywild, Shadowfell, and Prime Materio. Those elves most of all devoted to Lolth came to be the Drow. Lolth has slain and absorbed some deities' aspects in the past. Some include Zenzarina and Moander. Lolth also tried to claim the Weave after the death of Mistra in 1480 Dale Reckoning. But these efforts were thwarted. In an event known as the Silence of Loth in 1372 Dale Reckoning, the priestesses of Loth were unable to access their divine powers. Loth had placed herself in a catatonic state as she grew in power. Members of the Dark Cellarine took advantage of Loth's absence, claiming territory through their followers in the Underdark. Loth later emerged as a greater power level deity. Lolth took no issue with the actions of the Dark Seldarine as they fought amongst one another, weakening them for her to come in and pick up the pieces. One by one, they were all defeated save Gonadivor, and Lolth now existed as the singular deity of the Drow people. This came to be known as the Reckoning. In the end, Lolth and Gonadivor were all that remained in the Drow pantheon. Post-Second Sundering, however, the other drow deities have re-emerged and are no longer dead, filling out the once previous drow pantheon. Lolth's most recent scheme in the Forgotten Realms was attempting to push out all of the demon lords into Faerun and lay claim to all of the abyss with the significant amount of eggs she had lain. Fortunately, that plan did not come to fruition, but Lolth is ever scheming. Personality Lolf has been described as an insane, vicious, conniving, narcissistic, selfish, and unpredictable deity. She takes great pleasure in setting her followers against one another, locked in constant struggle for her affection and favor. Personal Realms 
Loth controls the demon web pits on the 66th layer of the abyss. Interspersed between the different portals is webbing made from planar material forming many different tunnels and catacombs. To get trapped in one of these webs is to invite the attention of one of Loth's servants. Throughout the demon web, you can find ruined buildings, ships, and other sorts of structures that somehow have managed to become entangled in the webbing. Members of the Dark Seldarine claim their own realm in the demon web pits. Their personal realms dangle from the interplanar network of web. Loth lives in a black iron fortress, grand in scale, in the shape of a spider that is constantly moving about the webbing. Allies in Allegiances Loth has a few allies. Loviatar, the lawful evil goddess of pain from the Faerunian pantheon. Selvatarm, Loth's personal champion and god of warriors in the Dark Seldarine. And Malar, the chaotic evil god of the hunt from, from the Faerunian pantheon. Enemies Loth has a good number of enemies. Chief among them is Corlon Larethian and the rest of the Elven Pantheon. Save Selvatarm, the rest of the Dark Seldarine despises her, despite Loth lording over all of them. Finally, all the other patron deities of the Underdark peoples dislike Loth. So deities like Ladwagwer and the Blood Queen and blip dual poop. Finally, there is Grumsh. Animosity exists between Grumsh and Loth after Grumsh's failure in tearing down Corallon so long ago. Stat blocks for the deity. For those of you looking for a stat block for Loth's avatar, there is none available in current official material released for 5th edition. But in previous edition, the designers put out stat blocks. They can be found in the following supplements. For 2nd edition, the stat blocks for Loth's avatar can be found in the Drow of the Underdark and the Demi Human Deities supplement. For 3rd edition, the stat block for Loth's avatar can be found in the Faiths and Pantheon supplement. I was able to find one stat block for Loth herself from a 3rd edition supplement called Faith and Pantheons. Symbols Loth has only a couple recognized religious symbols. First is a black spider with a female drow head hanging from a spider web, much like Loth herself. The final symbol that I have described here today is the symbol for Loth from the default setting of 4th edition, the Nentir Veil. This symbol is an eight-pointed star formed out of a web motif. Beliefs The central dogma of Loth's faith is as follows. Fear is as strong as steel, while love and respect are soft, useless feelings that none can lean on. All drow who do not worship Loth must be converted or destroyed. All weak and rebellious drow must be weeded out. All who impugn the faith must perish. Males are slaves of other races who act independently of Loth's dictates and those of her priestesses must be sacrificed. Those of the faithful whose loyalty is weak must be eliminated. Children are to be raised as loyal worshippers of Loth, and each family should produce at least one priestess to serve the Spider Queen better. Arachnids of all sorts are to be revered, and anyone who mistreats or kills a spider must die. Here are some of the other core beliefs of Loth's faith. Drow who are not worshippers of Loth are not to be associated with. Male drow are not to go above their female counterparts, and those who try to are to be sacrificed. Presence of the Faith on Faerun Loth's church is pervasive in drow society. In any community where her worship is strong, society and religion are united. The theocratic rule of these communities is tyrannical and oppressive. 
These societies are governed under the way of Lolf, a set of tenets for all drow to follow. Lolf favors the continual battle between the powers that be in each of these communities that worship her. Because of her capricious nature, she takes pleasure in the chaos of the vicious competition for her favor. Lolf-centric drow society is openly hostile to the worship of any other deity, even those in the Dark Seldarine. Any descent is to be rooted out and destroyed or banished to the wilds of the Underdark. Women are held in higher regard than men, as such men are seen as lesser and exist to serve the women. The nobility arrange themselves in familial houses. Each one of these houses is locked in continuous conflict, battling with one another for the favor of Lol. The elite amongst the houses form a ruling council. Each house is ruled by a singular high priestess of Lolf, known as a matron mother. Lolf does not have a strong presence up on the surface world of the realms, though she desires to slink her way into the various societies on the surface world. What is known of Lolf upon the surface is tied up in legend and myth. Few if any of the surface elves are willing to broach the topic of Lolf given she is the major source of elven and drow separation. Hierarchy and Structure of the Clergy If a dungeon master is going chiefly by alignment, worshippers of Lolf fall under all variants of neutral and all variants of evil alignment. I have to disagree that worshippers of neutral alignment honestly worship Lolf. Paying lip service out of self-preservation is a different story, however. Priestesses of Loth are almost exclusively women. Save for a paltry amount of male priests who never surpass the lowest levels of priesthood. Responsibilities and duties of clergy and worshippers. The priestesses of Loth are the judicial and police heads of their communities. Priestesses look to maintain the totalitarian rule of Loth by sending out inquisitors. These inquisitors seek any descent or worship of other deities who would rival Loth. Loth's faith operates on pure fear alone. There is no love for Loth, save the power and blessing she gives out. Loth has and will continue to lash out at any of her followers and they do well to remember that fact. They are to always act in accordance of Lolf's desires. The only issue is that Lolf's desires are hard to predict, and it is easy to fall into her disfavor. Lolf demands sacrifices at her altar, whether it be treasure or blood. She has a known desire for the sacrifice of magical items at her altar. Priestesses of Loth learn a lesser-known version of Elven known as High Drow. It is known by little. Within this language are secret hand gestures known to a select few. Priestesses lay down special glyphs to protect certain areas and property. The glyphs usually look like a pair of lips surrounded by spider legs. These glyphs are primarily defensive and will discharge if an intruder tries to pass by them. Orders and Priestly Bodies In the different drow cities where Loth's faith is prominent, priestesses are given different titles. For example, in the drow city of Gwaladurth, they are known as Yorn Gathrins. There are a certain variety of priests known to be called arachnes. They are immune to spider venom and can easily communicate with any spider. There is a group of holy warriors of Loth who go by two different names. One body is known both as the militant Milokar or the or Order of the Soul Spiders. Their ranks are composed entirely of male drows and they only exist in drow societies that allow male priests. The handmaidens of the Spider Queen, or the daughters of the Yachlal, are an all-female body of holy warriors. 
They only act when a drow society is judged to be ignoring and growing lax in their devotion to Lal, and use their might to re-establish order. At other times, they are sent out into the Underdark to assault known locations where the worship of other members of the Dark Seldarine are being carried out. Appearance and Dress Some rituals to Loth are known to be carried out by priestesses in the nude, and some are carried out in black robes trimmed with dark red and purple. Priestesses wear headdresses carved to resemble spiders. They often wear jewelry and medallions bearing different spider motifs. Of note is a particular platinum disc that is worn around the neck of a priestess with the symbol of Loth upon it. Priestesses tend to wear black and chainmail made by drow smiths and bucklers when they are out adventuring. Generalized Rituals Sacrifices are done in Lal's name with the hope that she will grant the Asker success in their own evil adventures. Traditionally, the sacrifice is carried out with a special dagger shaped like a spider with eight descending blades. Some gems or magic items will also be burned in braziers in offering, utilizing special incense and oils. It is said that if Loth is displeased with the offering being made to her, or she notices a disloyal servant is nearby during the con- conduct of the ritual, black and red flames leap out of the braziers to attack that individual or disvalued object. Often this is done to merely humiliate the individual, burning away clothing and hair. However, if Loth sees the need to injure or kill the individual, the flames will be much greater and do that much more damage. Priestesses of Loth purposefully sacrifice surface elves on nights of the full moon in spite of the elven goddess Sihanin. Rituals to Loth are often carried out in private in the company of an entire female audience, though a few are carried out in public areas. Some worshippers who fall out of favor with Loth are given another chance. However, Loth usually gives the disfavored a dangerous task that she does not expect the individual to succeed in. Specific Rituals The Test of Loth At a certain point, any follower who grows in power is subject to a test of loyalty performed by Loth or a Yach Lal. Loth will summon the individual to the demon web pits, while the Yachlal can carry out the test in the Underdark. Those who pass Lal's test are presented with title and respect on their return. Those who fail the test are turned into driders. The test involves Loth probing into the mind of the subject and identifying the potential for any disloyalty. Yachla are summoned by the burning of valuable incenses in a specific brazier fashioned out of rare black stone. The flames in this brazier serve as the gate to bring forth the Yachla from the demon web pits. The blooding is a rite of passage carried out where young adult drow must make their way up to the surface and kill an intelligent humanoid. If a community is deep in the Underdark, Slave merchants provide targets to be hunted. Annually, an event called the Running is carried out where drow raids a surface for victims to bring into slavery and loot. The Ceremony of Graduation, also known as the Feast of the Moon, takes place when priestesses graduate after their 10 years of education. Each priestess is required to summon a demon from the abyss during this event. Zin Karla Translated into common means spirit wraith. This ritual is an advanced form of animate dead from past editions. A telepathically undead creature is bound to the spellcaster as its soul is forced into its former body. This being has knowledge and the same level of skill as it had during its life, but it lacks personality, emotion, and memory. 
Spirit Wraith is summoned to complete a specific task and is compelled to wholly complete that task. General locations and descriptions of temples and shrines. Lost altars are covered in the skulls from victims sacrificed upon them. Up on the ceilings and upper walls of the temples and shrines is an extensive network of web where spiders of various kinds wait to feast upon the corpses of the sacrificed. Many of the noble houses of the drow have their own personal chapels and dedication to Lolth. Often, drow cities have a public space, octagonal in shape, for public worship. They also have a central temple that they use for training priestesses. Temples usually have different spiders that act as guardians. Some of the most mundane of spiders have protective ruins placed upon them to enhance their defensive capabilities. Each temple usually bears a statue of Loth carved out of black stone. All altars are carved from some kind of black stone. All furniture and religious structures in the temples are also carved out of marble or obsidian. The braziers used to light these temples are made in the shape of a spider. Utilizing a description of a shrine to Loth in The Adventure Out of the Abyss, we have an example for a general description of a shrine to Lolth. The floor of the chamber is decorated with silken mats that have spider web patterns. The central focus of the shrine is a wooden pedestal with a 10 foot, stall, 10 foot tall statue of a spider placed upon it. Specific locations Menzo Baranzan Arguably the most infamous city in the Underdark is known for its worship of Lolth. It was founded by the drow Menzobera some time ago, aided by the guidance of Lolth. In Menzoberanzan, the most prominent religious building is a rock Tinilith, where priestesses of Lolth receive their formal training. This center for religious education is built in the shape of a spider. Not many of the rooms are seen by the public, save the audience chamber and the large upper chamber uses for summoning. Shishamath is a drow city dominated by male drow wizards, and the priestesses of Loth play a lesser role here. In a previous civil war, the male wizards beat down the matron mothers to claim superiority. Walla Durth, also known as the Temple City of Loth, lies beneath the Calum, Calum Desert. Its society is structured much like Menzo Baranzan with ruling noble houses, though each house venerates Loth in their own unique way, rather than in a uniform fashion as seen in Menzo Baranzan. Because of these competing factions, Walla Durth is full of temples and shrines to Loth. Some of these places of worship have been abandoned after certain houses have died out. Ched Nasad is a ruined city at the bottom of a chasm. The buildings of the city once were connected through a dense network of webbing. However, Dwergar opponents made use of alchemical fire to burn down the webs. The few surviving matron mothers have started rebuilding Chad Nasad below the network of web where the city once hung. Undrek Thaws is a network of ten drow towns connected to each other via portals beneath Thay. Yath Chal is a dismal community of entirely Kiteens and Choldrith. In the center of this community is their largest temple. The denizens have repurposed a natural cavern to house a singular altar where rituals are carried out. Character Options For second edition characters, in the Demi-Human Deities supplement, you can find the breakdown for the specialty priest known as Arachnes. For third edition characters, in the Faiths and Pantheon supplement, you can find the prestige class known as Arachne. In the Undernark supplement, you can find the Arachnomancer prestige class. 
With the release of Mordenkainen's Tomes of Foes, the creators decide to add the War Domain as one of LOL's suggested domains. I personally do not agree with this choice. I guess given her tyranny, her tyranny and lordship over the drow people, that might be fitting. In my personal opinion though, her one suggested domain should be trickery as it has been listed in previous su supplements. For those players playing 5th edition, I have created a background that might be fitting for a worshipper of lol. For your two skill proficiencies, I recommend taking Deception and Intimidation. For a tool slash language proficiency, I suggest taking uh, the two languages under Common and Abyssal. A kind of a nice ribbon ability for this uh, custom background either could be the noble's position, the noble's position of privilege in the uh, player's handbook, or the courtier's court functionary ability found in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. As with almost every other religious background, I always suggest taking the Acolyte starting kit from the player's handbook. The worship of Loth revolves around routing out secrets and between plotting rivals and ident identifying any sword sent within Loth's communities. Thus the majority of the stealthier classes play into this archetype. So with that the classes and subclasses that work well for PCs or NPCs who hold Loth as their patron deity in 5th edition are as follows. Uh, there's the cleric, uh, obviously either take the trickery domain or the war domain, if so, if you so choose. Uh, for monk, there's the way of shadows, uh, for the paladin. I would look at the oath of conquest for the player looking to play a current or former member of one of the named orders of holy warriors. Uh, with the ranger, you have a lot of options. You can take one of the hunter, the beastmaster. Uh, and for the beastmaster, I would really kind of lean into the whole lol worship and take a giant wolf spider companion. And obviously, there's the gloom stalker who is at home in the underdark. And when you go to choose one of your favorite enemies, I would choose the elves and one other race of surface humanoid or even one. Of of the Underdark peoples, like the Dwargar, for example. A ranger in dedication to Loth would be primarily used to go up and capture any potential sacrifices. And to round out the suggested classes is the Rogue. Um, the following three subclasses I feel best kind of play into the whole subterfuge and mistrust angle that's really kind of prominent in law societies, uh, so there's the Assassin, the Mastermind, and the Inquisitive. Dungeon Master Options Loth has a good handful of monsters who are related to her worship. The following monsters can be found in 5th edition material. In the Monster Manual, you have stat blocks for Driders and Yachlal. As I mentioned before, Driders are formerly Drow who have been turned into these monstrous creatures by Loth after failing her test. They are shunned by Drow society to roam the wilds of the Underdark. Yachlal are known as the Handmaidens of Loth. They are commonly summoned by the priestesses of Loth. Yachlal can exist in a handful of different states. One of them is the pillar-shaped ooze. It almost looks like a melting candle, as it is depicted in the Monster Manual. Another is a hazy mist in the air, a giant spider, and finally they can shapeshift into a beautiful humanoid, usually a female drow. In Volo's Guide to Monsters, you have the Dragloth, the Choldress, and the Chittens. Separate from the drow are the Chitons and Choldress. They hate drow but worship Loth in their own separate way. The Choldrith lead these arachnid societies as priestesses. Their towns are made up of hard form webbing and in and their houses are interspersed between web bridges. 
These two arachnid-type people are said to have been created in a dark ritual by drow worshippers of Walth using, using elven prisoners long ago. Draglos are created through a mating ritual performed between a Glabrazu demon and a priestess of Walth. Draglos are genderless and sterile creatures who serve as personal bodyguards to priestesses. After the priestess who bore it dies, that Dregloth often proceeds to live as a wild creature in the Underdark, and some of these creatures are so strong in their devotion to the law that sometimes they even become clerics themselves. In Mordenkind's Tome of Foes, you can find the stat block for the Retriever. The Retriever is described as a large construct who is spider-shaped, who, pr who prowls the abyss hunting down any demonic sacrifices for Lolth. I note here the stat block for the Miralokar, which has not been released yet in 5th edition. But you can find the stat block for this monster in the Monsters Compendium Monster of Faerun supplement for 3rd edition. Miralokar are another personal servant of Lolth who can be summoned. Uh, they are skeletal arachnids with red eyes that give off a dull, sickly green glow. They are summoned to seek out any person who has attempted to escape the influence of Lolth. As a demon lord, Lolth has many of the different types of demons at her beck and call, so of course you have, across the different supplements, all the different stat blocks for the different types of demons. Last but not least is the various different stat that blocks for your different types of spiders that can be found in the other supplements as well. There are a lot of stat blocks that can be used for NPCs by a dungeon master. For the monster manual, you have the whole section devoted to drow. So you have the drow, the drow elite warrior, the drow mage, the drow priestess of Walt, and even in the generic NPC section, you can make use of the assassin and spy stat block. In Volo's guide, you have the Blackguard stat block in case you want to make an NPC who is a holy warrior of Lolth. And Morden Kynan's Tome of Foes has even given us more Drow NPC stat blocks that we can make use of. So you have the Drow Arachnomancer, the Drow Favorite Consort, the Drow House Captain, the Drow Inquisitor, the Drow Matron Mother, and the Drow Shadow Blade. A dungeon master looking for magic items associated with Lolth can find the following items in your different supplements. Uh, for the dungeon master's guides, you have in there the Cloak of Arachne Arachnia, the Dagger of Venom, Potion of Poison, Ring of Mind Shielding, Slippers of Spider Climbing, and Wand of Web. And in Xanthar's Guide to Everything, there is the Perfume of Bewitching. A lot of these items would be good for a drow society where protecting oneself, but at the same time stabbing others, rivals, houses, uh, other female priestesses who might be trying to contest a given NBC. These items can be used to kind of gain the upper hand. Lol's favored weapon is the spider, though her humanoid worshippers emulate this through a intricate dagger that has eight barbs to symbolize the eight legs of the spider. The priestesses of Lolf also utilize a magic whip known as a whip of fangs, this is not described in any 5th edition supplements, but you can find it in the Demi-Human Deities supplement for 2nd edition. Uh, the tails of the whip are made up of living snake heads, and only evil priests are able to use them. Rather than, rather than inject venom into the target, the snakes send magic into victims that numb and send spasms throughout them. All right, and with that, I'd like to thank you for listening once again to Religion in the Realms. If you are interested in keeping up with the release of future episodes, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and follow the podcast Twitter account at Realms Religion. 
If you wish to get in touch with me personally, my personal Twitter handle is at Shiv's Embrace. That is spelled Sierra Hotel India Victor Sierra Echo Mike Bravo Romeo Alpha Charlie Echo at Shiv's Embrace. Next episode, we will continue our look at the deities in the Drow Pantheon. Our next deity will be Karen Saley, who is known for her love of vengeance and necromancy. Until next time, may Timor look kindly upon your dice rolls, Helm protect you, and Lathander light your path. Music for this episode, Shadowlands 5, Antichamber, by Kevin MacLeod, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0.